Greetings YouTubers, this video is part two in a series on backpacking stove efficiency. And if you haven't seen it, I recommend starting with part one. I did several dozen boils for that video, testing all manner of combinations. This pot with each of these three burner sizes and all of those combinations at each of three flame levels, low, medium, and high. I repeat that matrix for all six of these similar volume pots in gradually increasing diameter and then add additional testing for the effects of having the lid on during the burn. The purpose was to establish a baseline understanding for how pot and burner dimensions affect the thermodynamics of heating the water inside. Now a wider pot can capture more of the flame, but it also has more surface area through which to lose that heat. So which one ends up being more fuel efficient and how does that change as you adjust the flame level? See part one for details. All those tests were done inside the controlled environment of my shop, without wind. Well, the presence of even a light breeze can begin to change things, so this video takes a look at how the movement of air affects the flame of both a protected and unprotected burner head at levels of low, medium, and high, as well as the role of pot dimension in the gathering and dispersion of heat, and the effect of lids when it's windy. The weights and measures are the same as before, see part one for details. It contains information on testing methodology, instrument accuracy, and margins of error. What's new this time is the fan. I wanted something with a variable control so I could set the wind speed myself, and I needed something that could go fast but also very slow. This Vornado 723DC fit the bill, and the brushless motor gave good repeatability from settings. And I set it up to point directly at the pot and put it several feet away to give the air a chance to normalize, if you will, before reaching the flame. Wind speed was measured at the pot using a Kestrel 1000. All tests were performed in still air, and then, depending on the situation, it marked speeds of 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 miles per hour. For this video, I limited the pots to just two, a narrow and a wide option. These were basically top choices from part one for weight and fuel efficiency. I also used two burners. One was the BRS 3000T. It's famous for being the smallest, lightest stove you can buy, but its unprotected head is also notorious for being impacted by even a slight breeze. And the other was the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe, whose recessed burner head is marketed specifically for its wind resistance and is almost identical to that of the Soto Windmaster. Note that all tests in this video were done with naked pots and stoves, meaning no external windscreens were used. And obviously that will be the next testing challenge for part three, but you can't tell how much a screen might help until you know how your system performs in wind without one. For part one, the temperature in my shop was set by thermostat and varied between 48 and 50 degrees. Well, winter was slowly yielding its grip as I performed the second battery of tests, so the temperature varied between 50 and 54. And water heats are measured by the delta T as described in part one, so the small increase in temperature isn't particularly an issue, but the temperature variation did increase from 2 degrees to 4. Also, wind speed's not as tightly controllable a variable as boil temperature and water weight. And per my wind meter, speed bounced around plus or minus 0.1 miles per hour. So a three mile per hour set speed would actually read back and forth between 2.9 and 3.1 miles per hour. And over time, it should average out. Still, these things mean the margin of error here might be a little higher than previously. And with all that said, let's get to some results. I started with the classic ultralight combination of the BRS 3000T stove and the Tox Light 550 pot. If you're trying to keep your cook kit as light as possible, you won't want to carry any extra weight that isn't justified by its performance. So how does this compact little system handle a bit of breeze? I checked it both with and without a lid. Now as seen in part one, the difference in fuel efficiency that a lid makes is very small with no wind and a narrow pot. Here it's just a few tenths of a gram of fuel per boil. Over the life of a small gas canister, that saves you only 7.22 grams of fuel. Not enough to justify the ultralight Ruta Locura carbon fiber lid, but a foil option would cover it. By adding one mile per hour of wind, which I would characterize as very slight, the difference a lid makes grows to just over half a gram per boil. And at two miles per hour, still a light breeze as opposed to a genuine wind, the advantage of a lid jumps to over 2.6 grams per boil. And that will save you over 21 grams of fuel per canister, more weight than even the stock titanium lid. But the fuel savings of a lid are not the biggest thing shown in this graph. 
The elephant in the room is the wind performance of the stove itself. In still air, you're burning roughly six grams of fuel to heat each pot of water. With just a slight amount of movement, fuel use jumps to around nine grams, a 150% increase. And then at two miles per hour, it surges further. So even with a lid, you'll have to burn almost two and a half times as much fuel as when the air is calm. So for the 110 gram can, that means you get 19 full boils at zero miles per hour, 12 at one mile per hour, and only eight at two miles per hour, where you are throwing well over half your fuel to the wind, comparatively speaking. It gets bad pretty quickly. Of course, this is with a stove that has an unprotected burner head. It's also at a low flame setting. Here's what the BRS flame looks like set to low at zero, one, and two miles per hour on a Tox 550 pot. From part one, we saw that a low flame was more fuel efficient regardless of stove type or pot size, but that was without wind. A low flame, which could be characterized as a weaker one, might be more susceptible to the cross movement of air than a stronger flame. So I ran the test series again, this time using my medium level gas flow regulator. As expected, the still air efficiency was worse than with a low flame. We went from about six grams per boil to over seven. As soon as you add movement, the efficiency drops just like before. A medium flame at one mile per hour is still less efficient than a low flame. But look what happens at two miles per hour. With a medium flame, fuel use increases again, but only slightly, whereas the low flame's use jumped dramatically. And behold the side-by-side -side comparison. The fuel efficiency tipping point is reached. At two miles per hour, you'll actually use less fuel by turning up the heat. With a lid, you can get one extra boil out of a small canister by using a medium flame instead of a low one, if the wind is strong enough. If most of your delicate flame is being swept away from the pot before it can heat your water, it becomes more efficient to make that flame forceful enough to overcome this cross flow. So here's a look at the flame displacement on medium. And on low, I didn't even try to run the BRS through a three mile per hour wind. It was obvious that its threshold for being overwhelmed was already approaching at two miles per hour. I did push the medium flame up to three miles per hour though, and you can sort of see that threshold I'm talking about. Any movement at all jumps the fuel use, but going from one mile per hour to two only bumps it incrementally. The flame is still strong enough to mostly reach the pot and not much efficiency is lost. But then at three miles per hour, you see this sudden surge. And this is how you can tell you're reaching that stove and flame levels breaking point, if you will. Then I ran the series again using a high flame, and the efficiency on high was generally worse than medium, until you hit that three mile per hour wind. The improvement on medium isn't huge, but it's statistically significant. And the BRS flame displacement on high. So, with a BRS 3000T, you're better off using it on low only if the conditions are calm or there is only the slightest of breezes. At two miles per hour, you'll save fuel with a medium flame and at three miles per hour, just set it to high. And previously, we saw that the width of your vessel can impact the fuel efficiency of heating the water inside. And I was curious about how those differences would play out in the presence of wind. So I ran the BRS series again on low flame, this time with the Tox D118 bowl. It hit sort of a sweet spot with fuel and weight efficiency from part one. So a wider bottom can capture more of a stove's heat. So the efficiency of the bowl is generally higher than for the pot. We also saw from part one that the difference on a low flame was small. And that's because on low, the flame splash doesn't really exceed the pot's width. So a bowl doesn't gain you much. But start pushing that flame sideways and the advantage of a wider vessel starts to grow. 
At one mile per hour, the bowl's advantage jumps to over one and a half grams of fuel per boil, seven times the difference without wind. And at two miles per hour, that advantage grows to almost two and a quarter grams. And these savings will get you from one to two extra boils per can of gas when the air is moving, just by switching to a wider vessel. So here's a low BRS flame against the D118 bolt. For a medium flame, the pot versus bowl results follow a similar pattern. Once you start moving the air, the advantage really appears. And at that two mile per hour efficiency tipping point, use of a bowl can get you an extra boil out of your can. This is a medium BRS's flame displacement against the D118 bowl. And then lastly, I ran the pot bowl comparison on high, the familiar pattern with a bowl eking out an extra boil over the life of a gas canister. Recall that three miles per hour was the efficiency threshold for using a high flame over a medium one. That was with the pot. Interestingly, the bowl seems to have stalled that threshold just a bit, with medium at three miles per hour still using ever so slightly less fuel. You're teetering on either side of that tipping point though. And here's the high flame with the bowl. Okay, interesting stuff, but gray shirt guy has a point. There are stoves designed and marketed specifically for their improved wind resistance. MSR's Pocket Rocket Deluxe is one of them. So it looks like I'm running all these boils over again with this. Starting with a low flame and no wind on the Tox 550 pot, we see the same results as from part one. There's very little difference between the two stoves. As soon as you start moving the air, however, the difference becomes obvious. At one mile per hour, the Pocket Rocket Deluxe goes from a slight disadvantage to an efficiency improvement of over one gram of fuel per boil. And at two miles per hour, the gap widens to over three grams per boil. And that will get you two extra boils out of a 110 gram fuel canister. And over that life of 10 boils, the Pocket Rocket Deluxe saves you 33.8 grams of fuel if it's consistently windy at two miles per hour and you use a low flame. But the MSR weighs 56.1 grams more than the BRS, so technically speaking, those fuel weight savings still aren't worth the added weight. Suppose you're on a longer trip though and you'll be carrying one of the 227 gram canisters. Then the low flame savings at two miles per hour add up to 74.4 grams of fuel. That's more than the extra from the wind resistance stove actually making the heavier MSR both the more fuel efficient and weight efficient choice. It also gets you an extra six boils out of this can. So here's the MSR's low flame displacement against the Tox 550. If we crank the heat up to medium, this is how the two stoves compare. As with the BRS, it's still more efficient to use a low flame up to one mile per hour. The tipping point is reached at two miles per hour, and at three miles per hour, the gap between protected and unprotected burner heads really starts to show. So as that breeze becomes a wind, the BRS's performance is crashing. Its medium flame is close to being overwhelmed, but the MSR's fuel use has increased only marginally. The difference between the two stoves is now over four grams per boil, giving you an extra two boils per small can with the MSR, despite the overall decrease in efficiency that wind inevitably brings. And similar to the situation with a low flame, the fuel weight savings won't make up for the heavier stove until you need the bigger canister. So take a gander at the medium PRD flame displacement under our Tox 550 pot.
For the high flame chart, I decided to push the BRS up to 4 miles per hour just to see how it compared to the MSR. The Pocket Rocket Deluxe is still hanging in there like a champ with only an incremental increase in fuel use from 3 to 4 miles per hour. The BRS, however, is now past what I would call its breaking point. It literally took more than twice the fuel to boil water. You can only get four full boils from an entire canister at that wind speed, whereas the MSR will still get you nine. Over nine boils, the MSR saves you well over 100 grams of fuel in comparison, but that's putting aside the fact that you'd actually need to bring three canisters to get nine boils with the BRS at four miles per hour. And here's the MSR flame displacement on high. Now that was up to 3 miles per hour, and here is a direct comparison between the BRS's flame and the MSR at 4 miles per hour. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what an overwhelmed flame looks like. Right, the BRS isn't going to make it any further, but the MSR was still soldiering on, so I ran the Pocket Rocket Deluxe up to 5 miles per hour to see how far it could go at both medium and high flame levels. As you can see, when it's really windy, you better turn it up. The medium flame is getting blown away at 5 miles per hour. It almost couldn't reach temperature, and 30 grams of fuel is absurd. And while the high flame was profoundly more efficient, it shows an increased step that indicates the practical limit of the stove is near. And here is the MSR's flame displacement at 5 miles per hour on both medium and high flames. There's a visual test you might apply in the field to identify when the wind is in the process of overwhelming your stove, letting you know when it may be time to turn the flame up. So here is the MSR on medium at 3 miles per hour. And notice how all three pot supports are glowing cherry red. Now here it is on medium at 4 miles per hour. And I filmed these clips back to back on a single burn. I just changed the fan speed on the fly. So you see the windward pot support initially glowing from the 3 mile per hour sequence, but watch how it goes dim during the 4 mile per hour segment. The wind is now strong enough to essentially push the flame off the forward pot support such that it no longer gets hot enough to glow. And that seems to coincide with the approach of the fuel efficiency breaking point. The same effect happens with the flame on high, just at a faster wind speed. At 4 miles per hour on high, all the supports glow but at 5 miles per hour, the windward one goes dark. Again, this corresponds with the sharper step increase in fuel use that warns of the stove's practical limit in that situation. And for the most part, I don't talk about boil times because these videos are about fuel efficiency, not speed. However, the interplay of wind speed and flame level creates some interesting options. Look how, for much of the middle, the efficiency difference between medium and high is pretty small. In fact, at 3 miles per hour, the fuel used to boil a pot of water happened to be exactly the same. And that means you can switch from a medium flame to a high one with no fuel penalty, saving some of that boil time for free. At 4 miles per hour, there is an efficiency gain from using high, but it's fairly insignificant. However, you can save well over a minute getting your dinner hot. And the 16 plus minutes to boil at 5 miles per hour shows why there's more reasons than fuel efficiency to go high when the wind picks up. And boil times were recorded by the way, and they're available with all the other data and charts in the downloadable spreadsheet. See the description box for a link. Now recall from part 1 that lids make less of a difference in fuel efficiency the faster your flame. So I wanted to see how that went in the wind all the way up to 5 miles per hour, which necessitated using high. Generally, the benefit of lid meant a gram or less of fuel per boil. For the record, though, I always carry a lid. I like examining the theoretical trade-offs between criteria, but I'll never be able to notice the weight of just a lid in my entire pack. But thinking about saving an undetectably small amount of cooking fuel is what happens to give me the warm and fuzzies. 
My philosophy with every video I do is not to suggest the correct way of doing things, but rather to supply you with the data so you can make informed decisions using your own personal priorities. So for the sake of thoroughness, I started running the MSR stove through the testing series again using the bowl. On low flame at zero miles per hour, it was only very slightly more efficient than the pot, as expected. And start moving the air at one mile per hour and the efficiency of the bowl starts to grow. Still good. Then at two miles per hour, this happened. Instead of the bowl's advantage growing even wider, it collapsed entirely. The pot was suddenly the more efficient vessel. This result caused me a non-trivial amount of consternation. So I double checked both the bowl and the pot, testing them side by side to avoid any possible issues with canister pressure drop. Sure enough, at two miles per hour, the wider bowl becomes less efficient than the narrower pot. Here is the MSR's low flame displacement against the Tokes D118 bowl. So in order to see whether this was some sort of fluke or the start of a trend, I ran the MSR bowl series on medium so I could push the wind all the way up to 5 miles per hour. The stronger flame delayed the onset of this turnover, but there it was still. At 4 miles per hour, the bowl becomes less efficient than the pot, and by almost 2 grams of fuel per boil. And the real clincher came when I ran the test at 5 miles per hour. That speed was close to overwhelming a medium flame, even for the wind-resistant MSR stove. But after about 16 minutes, I was able to get the pot to my target temperature of 200 degrees. However, with the bowl, I was unable to heat the water past 185. And after about 19 minutes and over 36 grams of fuel, it became clear the temperature had stopped rising and I aborted the test. Here's what the medium flame displacement looks like with the MSR and the D118. So despite having, in theory, a more efficient aspect ratio for catching heat from a stove's flame, the bowl becomes less efficient when the wind picks up and literally failed to reach temperature at 5 miles per hour. So what is happening? Well, as in part one, I believe we've encountered another countervailing effect. On the gain side, a wider vessel exposes more surface to the flame, aiding in the transfer of heat through the pot to the water. While on the loss side, more surface area radiates that heat back into the environment faster. And every second that you're pumping heat in, it's also leaking out in every direction. And raising the temperature of the water is always a game of pumping heat in faster than it can leak out. The problem is, heat transfer rate is based on the temperature differential, so the hotter your water gets, the faster that heat is leaking back out. And in the case of our bowl, we apparently reached equilibrium at about 185 degrees, the vessel was leaking as fast as a medium flame could fill it. In a situation like that, you aren't going to be able to reach 186. So using Tokes dimensions for the 550 pot and the D118 bowl, you get total surface areas of 381 square centimeters and 404 respectively. Not a huge difference, but you do have more opportunity to lose heat with the bowl. But perhaps more important is the relative area of each vessel's bottom. This is the surface area that gets the hottest and the one that stands to lose heat fastest. The pot's bottom is 71 square centimeters, while the bowl jumps to 109. So the stronger your wind, the more you push aside that flame and expose this surface to cold air. So you're not just increasing the cold transfer out, but you're simultaneously scattering the flame to decrease the hot transfer in. And this trade-off goes worse for the bowl than the pot and eventually reaches a tipping point based on wind speed and flame strength. I finished off by running the bowl series again on high, and that pushed the turnover off to 5 miles per hour, but it's still there where a pot saves you over 2.5 grams per boil, and your flame shots with the MSR and the bowl on high.
Just a couple of quick bonus topics before we wrap things up. As a reminder, this video is not intended to be a stove review per se. I'm just using representative stoves from two classes to help explore the principles that play in the heating and cooling of water when there is wind. Now, that being said, I was curious to see how the Soto Windmaster compared to the Pocket Rocket Deluxe. They both advertise wind resistance and they have very similar burner heads. And at this point, I was getting worried about the weather changing in my shop warming up, so to keep the accuracy high, I reran all the MSR tests for this comparison. I did each stove one right after the other for the same wind speed, so there would be minimal inconsistency between results. Remember from part one that my back-to-back -back repeatability this way was 0.04 grams. And that should be enough to measure even small differences between stoves. So using the Tokes 550 pot and high flame with the lid on, I get the following results. With no wind, there's essentially no difference between the two. It's very close to the margin of error. And at one, two, and three miles per hour, they are still very similar. The difference is statistically significant, but quite small, with the MSR being ever so slightly more efficient. And then all of a sudden at four miles per hour, the Soto starts pulling ahead with an advantage of 0.86 grams of fuel saved per boil. And at five miles per hour, the savings go up to about a gram and a half. And at that wind speed, you'll save just over 10 grams of fuel over the life of a small canister by using the Soto instead of the MSR. And that's admittedly not much weight, but it's more than the weight difference between the stoves and enough to get you one extra boil from the can. And looking at them, it's tricky to tell why there'd be a difference. The burner heads are exactly the same diameter and they're recessed from the wind by the same amount and they have similar patterns of holes. If anything, I think it may have to do with the pot height. The MSR's pot supports slope upward which sits the pot just a little bit higher above the flame than on the flatter Soto. And a larger gap may let in more wind, and as the speed increases, allow more interference with the flame. Incidentally, for the MSR, this gets worse with a wider vessel, which will sit further out on the upward sloping supports, rising it even higher above the flame. And then lastly, I got asked an interesting question about pot alignment. Every group has that guy, the one who seems to pathologically persist in imperfectly placing their pot. The question was, does failing to align your vessel over the flame cost you any heat? And if so, what's the efficiency penalty? And within the context of wind effects, that gave me another idea. If the wind is costing you heat by pushing the flame off to one side, could offsetting your pot in the downwind direction possibly help recapture some of that lost heat? In other words, can deliberately positioning your pot off-center help counteract the wind's effect? Take the example of our ultralight champ, Graham Phobic. He won't carry a wind-resistant stove because they weigh more, so he hits the field with his ultralight BRS-3000T. Well, day one is calm. All is good. He sleeps well, knowing he didn't waste any weight on heavier equipment. But on day two, a breeze begins to stir, and Graham begins to doubt himself. What of the lost fuel he agonizes? How could he possibly compensate? To see what the champ might do in this circumstance, I ran a back-to-back -back comparison of an on-center pot versus an off-center one using the BRS, the Tox 550, and a medium flame with the lid on. To answer the original question, at zero miles per hour, an offset pot does cost you some efficiency, but surprisingly little. Only a tenth of a gram of fuel per boil, and that's with the narrower pot, which I put out as far as I thought would be safe to avoid tipping over and spilling dangerously hot water. Here's what that flame splash looks like. So I think the flame of the BRS is such a pinpoint that almost all of the heating is done through a tiny hot spot in the middle, which is mostly still covered by the bottom. And the flames you see spilling up the side are considerably less dense. And some of that heat is still transferring into the water through the walls. Now look at the zero mile per hour flame followed immediately by adding one mile per hour of wind. That spill of flame up the left side disappears, apparently being pushed underneath the pot as intended, which seems to have the desired effect. At one mile per hour, the off-center pot uses three quarters of a gram less fuel to boil. Not a lot, but it's a solution that costs you nothing to implement, so why not? The problem comes when we speed the wind up to two miles per hour. For some reason, the situation reverses back and continues that way at three miles per hour. I ran these burns again also just to double check. 
In a very slight breeze, you can recapture some heat by shifting your pot in the direction that the flame is blowing. But as it gets windier, this trick stops working and an offset pot ends up being less efficient than a properly centered one. And I'll confess that I don't have a great explanation why. A couple of quick thoughts and then maybe you all have a better idea. As the flame is blown sideways, it's not just being laterally displaced, it's also feathering out, spreading and becoming less dense. It's similar to how this smoke trail disperses as it goes. The point being is that the flame you're moving over to catch is becoming rapidly less useful, diminishing the returns of trying to capture it. And at the same time, there may be some costs to shifting the pot over. So pot overhang on the forward side may provide some level of wind protection. By moving the pot over so much, you could be exposing the burner head more directly. And though it doesn't really look like it in the videos, there may still be some heat capture on the front that gets lost when the pot's edge is pushed back. Other than that, I'm not sure. Okay, I believe that makes it summary time. Lids save fuel, but the effect is generally a gram or less per boil, and they make the most difference in fuel efficiency when the flame is low. But a low flame quickly becomes the least efficient option when there's wind. The largest lid benefit detected came from using the BRS at 2 miles per hour on low, with 2.6 grams saved per boil. However, at that speed, you should be using a medium flame because it's generally more efficient. And then the lid benefit is back down to a gram or less of fuel. And this held true with the MSR stove on high as well. On small trips, only a foil lid is likely to technically justify its own weight and fuel savings. Over the life of a larger canister, those savings add up to better pay for heavier lids. So the wider bowl's bottom makes it the more efficient heating vessel up to about 3 miles per hour. At 4 miles per hour, the cold air steals so much heat from the bowl's greater surface area that it overcomes the flame capture benefits of being wider, making the pot more efficient in stronger winds. So much so that the bowl could not even come to temperature at 5 miles per hour on a medium flame. Even with the wind-resistant MSR stove on high flame, the pot still becomes ascendant at 5 miles per hour. And this is great news for the champ, who wants any excuse to carry the lighter vessel. So where does that leave us in terms of gear choices when packing for a trip? The problem is you can't predict whether there will be wind or not, or how strong it might be. You want to resist carrying extra weight, but avoid getting caught unprepared. Well, trick number one is to adjust your flame accordingly. And this is something you can change at the time, and it does not require carrying any contingency equipment. You use a low flame when there is no or barely any detectable air movement. As the light breeze picks up, switch to a medium flame, and if it gets windy, use high. As far as which stove to bring, you're going to have to make an educated guess. Wind-resistant options like the MSR and the Soto weigh more than three times as much as the tiny BRS. So if you can guarantee little or no wind, like if you know you'll be cooking inside shelters, this will save you weight. It also depends on how many boils you'll need. At 3 miles per hour, the MSR saves you 4.23 grams of fuel per boil over the BRS. Over the 9 boils you can get with a 110 gram canister, that saves you a total of just over 38 grams. But the MSR weighs 56 grams more than the BRS, so no, technically the MSR doesn't justify its weight in that circumstance, but weight isn't the only way to look at fuel efficiency. With the lighter BRS in this scenario, you'll only get about 7 boils from a small can, and the MSR will get you over 9. If you do 3 boils a day, say one for your coffee, one for your oatmeal in the morning, another one for a hot dinner, the MSR will let you bring just one small can for a 3 day trip. If you choose the false economy of the lighter BRS, you'll have to bring a larger canister, a second one, or settle for a cold dinner or two. And as alluded to previously, I'm a conservationist at heart, so what I cherish is saving fuel, even at the expense of some weight. Though I want those compromises to be well informed and efficient. Again, the data is here for you to apply your own priorities. Now, all of this discussion is absolutely begging the question. Indeed, sir. What about windscreens? If you don't want to carry one, this is a look at some options for how to structure your kit. But an obvious response to the challenge of wind is to put up a screen. So I consider it a foregone conclusion that windscreens will, to some extent, improve fuel efficiency when the air is moving. The challenge is going to be 
if they can possibly justify their additional weight. As with part one, this video's purpose is to investigate some basic principles in order to establish a baseline. You can't calculate how much a screen might help if you don't know how things perform without one. So as I began investigating the options, I realized that screens are a topic for their own videos. So stay tuned for part three in which I hope to test a variety of methods for blocking that breeze. And as always, I very much appreciate your time and thanks for watching.